welcome back to Castle Lovestead. The backdrop I was working with fully imploded, so until I can get it sorted, we're back in my tidy little study. <laughs> the topic of today's video is the middle grade books I have read in the past month, specifically what I read in February. Let's get started. <laughs> For a Spell by Kara Sutton. This book is a middle grade Russian fairy tale retelling. It's about Anya. Is it Anya or is it Katya? I think it's Anya. Nadia! <laughs> Take two. This book is about Nadia who lives in an orphanage outside the forest in a Russian village. It also stars Zima, who is a wolf, and Baba Yaga the witch. So all of these different elements and perspectives come together to prevent the Tsar from instigating what he's calling the hunt, where he basically is going to go into the forest, kill all the animals, and burn the forest down and anyone who doesn't join him on the hut from the village will be killed. So the Tsar is pretty evil, has this very nefarious plan, and these three main characters kind of come together to try to stop him. I enjoyed this book. It is very much a fairy tale retelling, and it reads like a fairy tale. Fairy tales typically focus on the moral or the lesson to be learned from the story rather than being plot based or character based. They're more focused again on just that moral or lesson and A Wolf or a Spell definitely took that format. It wasn't plot based, it wasn't character based, it was instead just intending to teach us important lessons about life. And some of those important lessons include being careful not to judge others until you have spoken to them and can try to understand their situation. Um, some other lessons include accepting yourself and who you are and your roots and your heritage. So the lessons were great for a middle schooler. The book is also a little bit on the young side in terms of tone and style. And with middle grade, you'll find that. So some middle grades read older for kids age 11 to 13. Some middle grades read younger for kids 8 to 10. And this one was definitely on the younger end of the spectrum in terms of depth and complexity. But it was really beautiful in terms of atmosphere. It was cozy, it was warm, it was magical. Um, and the setting was just absolutely lovely. I have not read a Baba Yaga story before. I'm pretty new to Slavic folklore and Slavic fairy tales. So this was a good introduction to sort of that genre and that area of middle grade, um, that area of reading in general, that area of the world. And I'd really like to continue learning more um, about these kinds of stories and this rich tradition of storytelling. Um, so I did give this book four stars out of five and I will definitely check out more work by Kara Sutton. Wondersmith, The Calling of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the second book in the Nevermore series and it is a long junky book. <laughs> um, 500 and some pages was it? Yeah, 520 pages. And this continues the story of Morrigan, who is learning about being a wondersmith. And I'm trying to talk about this story in a way that isn't super spoilery for the first book. She basically is attending a magical school, and it's about what she's learning in that school, and some of the things she's learning about her community, particularly her Nevermore community. What I really liked about this is how Jessica Townsend explored the city or the, I don't know if it's a city or a state, I'm pretty sure it's a city is how it's described, 
but it explored the city of Nevermore in a way that showed it as a complex, holistic view of the city. That there are some areas of the city that are whimsical, magical, fun, and beautiful, but other areas of the city that contain a lot of crime and darkness, and I think that it really reflects a holistic view of what a city is. Like this, a city is like a functioning entity in itself. And just like a human isn't all good or isn't all bad, um, a city isn't all good or all bad um, because the city is made up of humans. And I like that Nevermore was reflected in this way as not being like perfect, but as also having some of these darker edges and exploring some of those darker edges. There were some really hard hitting themes in this book, themes of human trafficking, themes of um, educator bias in education, particularly in the teaching of history, that theory of the people who teach history are those in power. And so what is true often gets skewed or misrepresented. And um, teacher abuse, so Morgan has a professor that is particularly abusive towards her. Um, and I thought that Jessica Townsend did it bravely. She did not hold back in exploring these themes with middle graders. She was not afraid to go there <laughs> with them. And at the same time, it was still appropriate. So I don't think it is anything that would traumatize a child unless they are extremely sensitive to certain things. As an adult reading this book, what it did was it really helped to keep my attention. It really helped me to be able to continue to find deeper meaning in these stories and to connect with the characters. So I really did love this book and I'm excited to read Hollow Pox. I'll be reading Hollow Pox this month in March. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I did rate this also four stars out of five. The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. This was perfect overlap with A Wolf for a Spell. And I have to chuckle because A Wolf for a Spell was middle grade March's pick for, not middle grade March. A Wolf for a Spell was middle grade monthly's pick for February. And the Castle of Tangled Magic was a touch of Whimsy's book club pick for February, and they overlapped so nicely um, because this is also a Russian folktale. <laughs> so um, this one is about Castle Mila, and Castle Mila is so cool. So Castle Mila has these domes, and each dome um, has like a specific focus, like one is the fire dome and one is the astronomy dome. And you have to get to the domes by going through all these secret passageways. And some of them, they have not found out how to access yet. And in one particular dome, there are bursts of magic coming out of the dome. So the main character is Olia and she is tasked with saving her home because the magic is just pushing out of the sun dome in particular. So she has to figure out how to get up there and then she has to figure out how to, how to stop the magic from completely wiping out her home because what's happening is the magic is creating these magical hurricane-like storms that is slowly destroying parts of the castle. So she's tasked with this and along the way she meets some really fun characters. Some of my favorites would be Felix and Cascadia. I also really loved Olia's grandmother in this. I thought that she was so wise and wonderful. And one of the characters in this is a creature called a Domovoy, which is a spirit that protects the castle of Castle Mila and this particular spirit takes the form of a fox and his name is Felix. So from my understanding, my limited understanding of Slavic folklore, Domovoy is a traditional magical creature in Slavic folktales. So it did make me wonder, 
You know, if Castle Lovestead had a Domovoi, would it be a fox or would it be something else? This is probably what it would be. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's the form Castle Love said Domovoi would take. I don't know the Domovoi's name yet. I'll probably have to leave out some offerings before it reveals itself. I did give the Castle of Tangled Magic four stars out of five. So overall, it was a really good reading month for my middle grade reading. I have set a goal at the beginning of 2021 to read more middle grade this year, and so far I am doing that. <laughs> it has really helped being a part of Middle Grade Monthly Book Club and A Touch of Whimsy Book Club because they do the hunting for me for the books to find. Um, and if you are interested in reading more Middle Grade, I do recommend three particular booktube channels that have really helped me to find some good reads. Um, the first is Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin. The second is Lexi at Alexandra Rosslyn. And the third is Jade at JD Ray Reads. Um, they they are all the hosts of these two book clubs that um, that I'm taking part in, and they really knocked it out of the park this month with their recommendations because all three of these books came from their recommendations. So, The Wolf for a Spell was the middle grade monthly pick for February. Wondersmith and the Nevermore series, both Gavin and Lexi have talked about extensively on their channels. And then um, the Castle of Tangled Magic was a Touch of Whimsy's book club recommendation. If you want to read Hollow Pox with me next month, I'm doing this as part of a read along through Sabine and Olivia's channel and I'll link their channels down below as well. So coming up in the month of, Mar month of March, I will definitely be reading um, Hollow Pox, which is the next book in this series. I'll be reading the Middle Grade Monthly and the A Touch of Whimsy book club picks and then hopefully a few other on top of that um, because I want to knock this middle grade goal out of the park this year. It is St. Patrick's Day as I'm filming this so I am wishing you all biggest blessings on this day. Coming from an Irish American those blessings mean something. So I hope that you're able to celebrate in a safe and magical and fun way today. Um, St. Patrick's Day and St. Patrick protects us all throughout the rest of the year so that our year can be full of goodness and gladness and joy and blessings and gifts and all of the good things in life. So if nothing else, I hope that you take today to just focus on the good things that are happening in your life because really if you start counting your blessings, I think you'll find that there's always going to be more good than bad. Until next time, my dear friends, please take care of yourselves and each other. Continue to read good books and drink good coffee. Bye.